today uh, with the first pick. Uh, Rick, where are we? We're at LSU, as you can see in the background here. And yeah. Unbelievable pro day. I uh, thought all the kids performed very well. So look forward to talking about some of these kids as we uh, proceed uh, before we move on to North Carolina tomorrow. Yeah, the uh, practice facility is just off to my right, not quite as nice looking as the baseball stadium in the background. So this is Rick's idea. I think 29 days till the draft. I'm not sure, so I don't want to put you on the spot there. But we're here, obviously, to Where's see. Where's our sign? Debo has it. Okay. He'll, he'll insert it here <laughs> back in the studio. So obviously here to see Jane Daves, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr., uh, Makai Win Wingo looked pretty good. Uh, we saw uh, George Jefferson work out on the defensive side of the ball. Mason Smith. Mason Smith worked out as well. We'll talk a little bit about that. But, of course, the conversation starts with Jaden Daniels. And, and uh, Debo, you have to know, I told Rick, don't tell me anything about what you thought. He likes to watch closer to the end zone when he watches the quarterbacks. I was closer to the line of scrimmage. Uh, so, Rick, I will give you the floor to give your unadulterated opinion of how Jaden Daniels looked and, and what looked to be about a 20-minute workout. Yeah, and it was all scripted. Uh, you knew the throws were going to be scripted. A lot from shotgun. There are a few from under Stenner, but not a lot of really three- and five-step drops. The biggest thing was he stepped on a scale. And I didn't know if he was going to step on a scale. He weighed 210 pounds a day. How's that for you? That was more than enough weight. Okay. And the height was he was 6035, which means he's just over 6'3 half. So all the measurables were there. When you're talking to some of the people we, I, we were able to talk to around a lot of think, guys think this is the number two quarterback coming mm -hmm. off the board. Now, we'll see what happens tomorrow when we go to UNC. But watching him in person, you can see that he has a live arm. You can see how easy the ball comes out of his hands. Everything was a tight spiral. There were a lot of short throws, intermediate throws that he was on target. Uh, a couple of deep throws, he seemed to get too much air under it at times and sailed over the receiver a little bit underthrown. Looked like he was placing the ball a little bit. Overall, though, there's no question about the arm talent. There's no question about the size since he didn't weigh at the combine and he weighed here. And I thought he had a very good pro day workout and checked all the boxes everybody was looking for. The ball came out of his hand nicely. This is something you talk about seeing these guys in person because you can watch them throw on television and, and you know understand they can throw the ball overhand. But in person, the ball popped. And I thought it popped more than CJ and Bryce a year ago at their pro days. you agree with that? Yeah, I would say similar. I mean, CJ's ball really came out nice last year, and so did Bryce's too. So, But the one thing I wanted to see is just there's no hitch in his throwing motion. No. It's just very smooth, easy throwing motion, nice stroke, throws a catchable ball, can put velocity on a ball with touch, especially on the deep in routes that he was throwing. Yeah, he so, was throwing some lasers on those deep ends. Eh? Yeah, and what I mean laser or uh, velocity with a touch is it, it's high enough to get over the linebacker's head at the second level but then drop in right in front of the safety. And I thought he did all that. The biggest part of is still coming up for him. He has a lot of meetings with teams after yeah. this workout. So a lot of the film work will be done. Uh, a lot of the mental work will be done. He'll get an opportunity to sit with all the coaches down here in the teams that he's going to meet with. And from everything that I've heard so far, he's aced all those tests. Uh, and by the way, with the first pick, we call it layering the ball to the second level. So you need to learn that. That's in the handbook. You must not have read that part. No, it's touch with velocity. Touch but... with velocity layered. One of the things I noticed, and you talk about sometimes too much air in the deep ball, you want that more than a flat deep ball. That seems like something you can work with a little easier if you're throwing it too high as opposed to throwing sort of the touch with velocity on the 60-yarder, for example. Yeah, no, there's no question he does have touch. And everything that he's seen on tape was verified in his workout today. It felt like uh, on one throw he missed. The receiver just a little outstretched hands in the end zone. That was an easy 70 yards. Yeah. By my unofficial math. His last throw of the, the session rolled to his right, off balance, 60 plus yards, right in the hands of Brian Thomas Jr. in the end zone. Again, you, you don't want to read too much into it, but you want him to, to check some boxes. And as you pointed out, he, he checked a lot of boxes in terms of the, the physical stuff. The two tens enough for you. I don't, I mean, he looks, he still looks slight of frame. So I don't know how teams feel about that. One thing I will know from the Rick Spielman scouting uh, grade book from a year ago, Debo. I saw Jane Daniels front and center while his teammates were doing the bench press, and he was the biggest cheerleader. Yeah, and you got to just make sure it's not fake or false enthusiasm. Didn't feel like it, no. No, I think you can tell his teammates really enjoy him. Uh, you can tell they rally around each other, and that's part of the being a, a quarterback. And what NFL teams are trying to figure out is when he steps into that locker room, will he be a leader? Will the guys rally around him now? 
I don't think he's going to be the raw, raw type guy, but I think with his presence and the way he plays that he has that natural leadership ability. By the way, I just noticed our shot. Your broad shoulders has, has pushed me out of the frame. Yeah, just keep moving in a little bit closer. <laughs> I'm like, Not the other way. Yeah. I'm out like this. Uh, I made some notes, Debo, because our, our, our reporter on the scene, uh, head coach and GM combinations here on site, the Giants, Commanders, the Patriots, uh, the Saints, they're down the street, so that makes sense. Antonio Pierce was 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 here. I saw Ryan Poles here. I didn't see Matt Eberflus or any of the coaching staff, but I, I wasn't looking super close, but I only saw Ryan Poles. Yep. And um, other fun fact, last night at the hotel, I won't name the coach, but I saw Rick Tackle, a coach, at the front desk. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. He can tell you exactly how that played out. But uh, it would have been a, a good fight. I, I'll, 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 I'll say that No, much. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jaden Daniels, feel good about that. Quarterback two. And, Ken, and Jess, just so someone thinks I didn't get in a no, fight. Right. Yeah. yeah, no. No, yeah. in fact, we went out to dinner after uh, our little jostle. <laughs> right, after after the and then Coach broke Rick's nose. He took him out for a hamburger. <laughs> uh, so Jaden Daniels, quarterback two, wish, as you know, will be at Chapel Hill tomorrow as the, the uh, W work, uh, with the first big RV bus rolls on. But nothing – come you come away with this – feeling really good if you're Jane Daniels and if your team's looking for a quarterback. Yeah, no, there's no question. And we didn't see the Caleb Williams workout, but again, he had a really good workout. So these teams right now that are there are watching this, they're throwing person, a lot of the GMs that may not have seen them during a season throw. And I think so far the two, the one we saw, and we'll see the other one tomorrow has checked all those boxes. Now it's a question of all the ancillary things that we don't know about. Yeah how they're performing in a team meeting, any background check, anything from a character standpoint we don't know about, that'll be the separation point. But I think all, at least I know Caleb, I know Jaden Daniels, and I know Drake May, all are going to probably be the first three picks in the draft. I was talking to some people here before the the workout, and as you know, this travel schedule for teams, scouts especially this time of year, is, is a grind, even though the regular season there's a lot of work. This is they start stacking these days on top of each other, and I heard people say that they were excited to see how this played out. And typically by this point, you might be burned out on having to go to the pro days and take all the notes and go back and, and fill out the forms when you get back to the hotel room. But I heard that people were excited, number one. And number two, the word I heard to describe defenses having to deal with Jane Daniels compared to some of the other quarterbacks in this draft is he can demoralize you in that he can win with his arm. And if the play breaks down, we've seen him win with his legs. And he told us in the combine that he was the fastest player on this LSU team. Brian Thomas Jr. told us he was the fastest. And that brings us to Malik Neighbors, who told us that he was the fastest. Malik ran an unofficial 4-3-5. Brian Thomas Jr. at the Combine. He didn't run here. Brian Thomas Jr. ran a 4-3-3 at the Combine. This afternoon, Malik, or this morning, I should say, Malik had a 42-inch vertical, 10-9 broad, 15 reps on the, on the bench press at 225. And you're less concerned about the bench press when looking at these numbers, but that's still the fact that he went out there and did it, competed for the feelings of the world. So let's start here. 42-inch vertical. 10-9 broad and uh, four three five. How does that make you feel about my neighbors? Well, I'm going to say that he just put on a show for me today, and I was shocked at how well built he was. Six feet one ninety nine, and how thick he is through his lower body. So when you see him move, you see how explosive he is every time he makes a cut, and he goes from zero to sixty. And there's no question about the play speed and the way he caught the ball and how crisp his routes were today. Uh, I really came away impressed with. Malik neighbors and I'm going to tell you this Marvin Harrison Jr. did not work out Malik neighbors came in and did everything and put on a show today don't be surprised with some of the people that I've talked to will have Malik ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr. on their draft board and I talked to some of the people that you didn't talk to and they said basically the same thing and the, the combat the, the come away for me was and what you talked about when you're a skill position player and you don't run it feels like you're hiding something. Maybe you're not. But the fact that Malik did run, and it just checks those boxes that we keep talking about. And you know there's no uncertainty. You don't have to guess. Now you can watch the tape and understand that Marvin Harrison Jr. is uh, a, an incredible athlete and usually outruns people down the field. But with Malik, you can see it on tape. I think we all agree he's twitchier in short areas. Oh, yeah, by far. And then to your point, we saw him today in basically just the uh, gym shorts. And his calves look like defensive tackle calves. Look like Byron Murphy calves. <laughs> well, I don't know if I would go that far. But you were shocked. I, uh, the lower half was thicker than I thought. Yeah, no. And that's that running back build yes, below. That's good and usually it. those guys that have that type of build below the waist uh, and the development they have through their thighs and their calves 
are the guys that are really explosive after the catch and really explosive into and out of their cuts. And everything we saw today uh, actually <laughs> was incredible, even more explosive, uh, not maybe because I got an opportunity to see him in person, but even more explosive than when you watch the tape, when you watch him actually move live. So uh, let's do the math here quickly. The, um, I'm trying to think here. The Titans are at seven. The Bears are at nine. The Falcons are at eight. Those feel like offensive tackle of the Titans, defensive end with the Falcons, and then maybe wide receiver at nine for the Bears? Potentially. But Malik ain't going to be at nine. You think he goes four? I think that that's where the Cardinals certainly find themselves. If, it depends on the movement in the draft, but I don't see a Malik Neighbors getting past a Los Angeles Chargers or a New York Giant. If my math is correct, and Debo can correct me, I believe that Jamar Chase went fifth to the Bengals back in the day when the, it was between him and Panay Sewell uh, in terms of the, the needs that we thought they needed to fill. He feels like a Jamar T Chase type game changer. I don't put that sort of label on him, but year one, I would be very unsurprised if he, he was that productive. No, he's going to be a very productive rookie because they're going to find different ways to get the ball in his hands, whether it's routes, whether it's quick screens, uh, some of the things. And I wouldn't be shocked if what Kansas City does with Debo getting the ball on jet sweeps just because he is such an explosive athlete. And, and then his teammate, Brian Thomas Jr., he's long. He's as tall as Jaden Daniels. I'm not sure what his official height was, but they were standing next to one another and looked to be about the same height. Uh, long limb, certainly not as thick on the lower half as his teammate Malik Neighbors, but we knew that. Um, did he answer any questions for you? Because he ran a lot of the routes that we've, we've seen him run on tape, and we know he did a three-cone drill, I believe. I didn't see the time on that, but he didn't. He stood on his times at the Combine. I feel as good about Brian Thomas Jr. today as I did yesterday. I feel better okay. about him. So I, he's no question clear-cut number four. Okay. Uh, I don't think he's going to pass Adunze uh, because Adunze did everything at the Combine. He did as well. He ran and ran a 4-3-3 at the Combine. And a 30-and-a-half bird, I believe. Yeah, and he is as smooth of athlete for his size as I've seen in a while. And the way he is eases into and out of his cuts, yet he's separating. The way he can get separation down the field, the way he tracked the ball today uh, over his shoulder on deep throws, he will be a legit deep threat for some team as a rookie. Okay, uh, do we have a comp for Brian Thomas Jr.? Are we, have we discussed that? I feel like we haven't. I don't know what a sort of a – a deep burner is that we've talked about. We'll have to circle back on that while you consult the Rolodex. Let's talk quickly about some guys on the other side of the ball. We saw uh, Makai Wingo work out. We saw Mason Smith, as you like to call him, work out as well. Jordan Jefferson, who was at the Senior Bowl, he's the one that got into the, the confrontation, yeah. if you will, with Christian Haynes, who uh, Braden Fist described to us as one of the toughest guys at the Senior Bowl. And I've heard uh, that recurring theme since talking to people. But let's start with Mason Smith. And I asked you this while we were watching him work out. Do you have any concerns about being high-waisted as a, as a defensive tackle type? And your response was? Yeah, no, I didn't have any concern. I thought for as tall as he is that he can bend, he got a little tired at the end there where he couldn't pick up when running some of the loops and some of the defensive line coaches there. Joe Collin from Kansas City, uh, Carl Dunbar uh, from Pittsburgh. Both of those coaches were involved, heavily involved in that D-line workout and the assistant D-line coach from Minnesota as well. But when he walked in, it was like, this is the first guy you want to come off the bus. He <laughs> reminded me from a body type like an Ari Armstead uh, who came out oh, of Oregon okay. and played with the San Francisco 49ers. When you watch him on tape, he has to learn to play with a lower pad level, uh, and he does get a little narrow base. But I think he has, kid has tremendous upside. And if one of these D-line coaches can take this kid that's so raw – yet so talented from an athletic standpoint and from a size standpoint, they may get themselves a steal in the draft either late Friday or early Saturday. But I think him and Wingo could probably go on Friday after what we saw today. And you, you pointed out to me that Joe Cullen was running the drills, Chiefs offensive line coach. D. Defensive line coach, excuse me. He didn't seem to put up with a lot of nonsense. He, no, he Joe has, Collins is a no-nonsense type coach. And he was getting after those kids. Yeah, he, he, and that's, he wants to see how the kids respond, and they all responded. And we saw Joe Woods, uh, the Saints defensive coach. I'm not sure if he's the D.C. or not, but he's on the staff there. He was working out the, the linebackers along with BMAX former uh, teammate Ike Taylor, who I think is in a role with the Steelers now. But uh, Makai Wingo, just watching from the side during the drills, he's a little more compact than Mason Smith. 
he felt like he had a little more punch too. And I don't know if that's a function of being tired, shorter arms, shorter stature, or if that's just the, the day we caught him on. I don't know if you noticed anything in terms of hand usage. Yeah, but for a shorter guy, I think he had 32 and a quarter inch arms, uh, which is plenty long enough for a shorter guy. But you see his build through his lower, and you can see why he's so explosive and right. that first step quickness off the snap. Now, I missed half the season with an injury, but tell you what type of competitor that kid is. He came back and played in the bowl game when he didn't. How does that make to. you feel? A, a check, check, check. With a pin. Yeah. But the biggest thing on him is I think he's going to carve out an initial role as an inline pass rusher. Uh, I think he still has to learn how to anchor better. He doesn't anchor, and we talked about uh, uh, Byron Murphy, second uh, from Texas, um, that is stouter at the point versus the run. But what you're finding out now is that these shorter, quick burst guys are coming, becoming effective inline pass rushers because the NFL is turning into a passing league. So maybe back in the day, you may overlook those guys because they're only 6'1 or 6'2, didn't have the stature that some of these big defensive linemen are. But because they can potentially be very good inline pass rushers and the way the league is passing the ball now, uh, he's going to add value to some team. And by the way, I, I know the people that listen and watch this are interested in the defensive linemen, but you might ask yourself, why are we talking more about Jaden Daniels? A year ago, we were at the Anthony Richardson Pro Day, and, and Gervon Dexter flashed. Right. And a uh, different body type than, than Makai Wingo, certainly. But he was a second-round pick, I believe, at the Bears. He contributed in year one. And that's why you watch – you're there. You might as well watch them and, and see if they have, even if it's not going to be – uh, top five picks. All right, before we wrap this thing up here, we're headed to Chapel Hill tomorrow on the old RV. It's right over there. I can see it gassing up. No <laughs> AC, so it's 460 AC. You know what that is? Uh-uh. Four windows at 60 miles an hour. Oh, okay. uh, so we'll have to, it's going to be a long ride through the night. But before we get to Chapel Hill, before we see Drake May, who is your quarterback to? Right now it's Jane Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll one. see how it is tomorrow. Uh, but uh, I love seeing these guys back to back. But I think talking to a lot of teams and uh, I even talked to some coaches in the SEC that played against Jaden Daniel and the respect he had amongst some of these SEC coaches for what he was not only able to do with his legs, but how he threw the ball makes him one of the most dangerous duels that have come out in a while. Do you remember what Dallas Turner said about preparing for LSU? Jaden Daniel is a problem. Yeah. And we didn't ask him. He just, he was very forthcoming with that. And I think we saw that, time and time again, because it's one thing to have to go up against a pocket pass or whatever that looks like in today's college or NFL game. Jane Daniels is a different type of animal. And, and I'll just say this. I talked to one defensive coordinator here today, and um, he was watching all of the corners coming out, and he happened to be watching Jaden Daniels, and he said, I do not want to play against that dude. Yes, and that's what you would imagine teams in the NFL or the conversations, you know better than me, you're having in those meetings – but, okay, we have quarterback X who can do all these things, but Jane Daniels does all these things plus all this other stuff. Is he better in the open field than Caleb? He is, right? Uh, as a runner? Yeah. Yeah, I would say he's faster. Faster. But they're both pretty elusive. Both but I'll just tell you that if a defensive coordinator in the NFL is already talking about Jaden Daniels, he's got the attention of a lot of – he's going to have the attention of a lot of defensive coordinators around the league. And, you know, it's attention. he has Rick – Rick Spielman's attention. Mr. Rick Spielman now has him as QB2. Um, Today. It, right. March 27th, year of our Lord, 2 p.m. We'll see if that changes because uh, 24 hours from now we'll be watching Drake May, and uh, we'll see if Rick changes his opinion. I will not be changing my opinion, Rick, because I write them in pen and wet cement, so they're they're unchanged. Yeah, I etch mine in oatmeal until I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of oatmeal, uh, Rick, I found him another copy spot here. So Baton Rouge. The, the vintage. The vine or the vintage? You didn't read the whole thing. It's the vintage. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, downtown Baton Rouge is pretty nice. All right, that's it from uh, the baseball stadium here. Practice facilities right there. Football stadium back that way. Uh, Rich Billman, I'm Ryan Wilson. Thanks for producing Mr. Debo. And thanks to all you guys who watch and listen and comment. And we'll see you guys from Chapel Hill.